Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Wolanda. I just found out some fucking bullshit about my student loans that I would like to share with other people who may not know. I started working for a nonprofit last year, so I submitted the form for public service loan forgiveness to tell them, hey, I'm working for a qualified employer, start counting my payments towards the 10 years of payments in order to get the rest forgiven at the end. So I did that. I've been making payments every month for the last year. We're hundreds of dollars of payments a month, not like $10. I've been dutifully paying my loans, even though interest has not been accruing, just like everyone has been telling us to do, right? I've been doing that. And I just found out that because the loans are in the COVID forbearance still, none of the payments I've been making actually count towards the 120 payments you need to make before you get your loans forgiven. So even though I've been taking advantage of the no interest and dutifully making- That's wild, that's crazy payments on my loans like everyone has been telling us to do i'm still getting punished for it and that's some fucking bullshit i have two hundred and forty four thousand dollars in student loan debt yes and i've never really shared this and now here i am sharing it out loud i'm sharing it with y'all i'm talking about it i'm writing about it why because you're brave you're really brave to put your finances out in public like that that's why because I know I'm not alone, because I know I come from a generation of people drowning in debt. A generation of young people who were asked to borrow astronomical amounts of money in search of what? The American dream? The story that we're supposed to go to college to get the best education possible. And then we feel like we did something wrong for going after that dream. Every time I hear things like this, it really, well, this narrative, it really, really hurts me because you can pay for your education. I don't think anybody really has a problem with the paying for their education. I mean, it is what it is. There's nothing in life free. I completely understand that. And I think everyone kind of sort of completely understand that, has that underlying understanding. It's the predatory actions behind it. The fact that college is so 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 expensive that's the problem that really makes it feel yuck you know it's like all right i'm pretty sure it does not cost this much per head for everyone to get their education for you in order for you as a company as an institution as an institution to survive to make sure the facilities and everything is up to par it does not cost as much as what you guys are charging doing what we were told to do and so here i am sharing it out loud hoping that y'all have the courage to share it out loud as well because apparently it is unconstitutional to forgive student loans it's unfair is it unfair? Let me know. Tell me your stories and your experiences. I want to hear from you. Another thing I have to say about this is there are rhetorics predominantly from the Republican side that they are so mad about the whole Joe Biden student loan forgiveness thing because they deemed in their mind that, oh, you guys took this loan. You guys should pay it, which I completely understand and I completely agree with people should be paying their loans because you took it. But like I mentioned, it's the predatory way that these loans were given, especially to kids. I don't care what anybody says. High school, 18 years old, you're still a kid. You're still a child. At 21 years old, you're still a child. So coming from being in your parents' house, coming from having majority people, having absolutely no type of financial responsibilities upon them, to going into a school where you think you're going to be returning what you put in, having a good ROI, and giving back to the community via whichever field you chose to study in, and going to college, getting tuition, food, room, board, all of that, place onto you literally like a credit card that you are just continuously swiping maxing out every year to four years down the line six years down the line eight years ten years depending on your major then you have to pay back and what they give you six months 
six months after school for you to find a job and start paying them back six months even if you do find a job once you leave six months is such a short period of time coming from absolutely being broke throughout the entire college lifetime to you actually having money to you know either splurge on yourself a little bit take a time off because you spent all of those years studying and depriving yourself of a lot of fun you know you did probably a lot of cheap stuff but actually wanting to enjoy life and taste the benefits of the work you've put in in the prior years you can't even do that because you're worried about Sally Mae coming to you knocking on your door and or garnishing your wages or looking at exactly how much you're making in order for you to repay them back immediately it's crazy it's wild and for us to be in a system to think that all of this time it was just a norm where other countries yeah their tax is probably a little bit higher but yet they don't have to go into debt in order for them to come and support and help the community whether you want to be in a medical field or in the engineering field or in the teaching field they don't have to go into debt in order to come and help society contribute back into society it's crazy that's why a lot of people in the united states they they're looking like what's the point what's the point in going to school now because a lot now honestly is who you know it's not what you know probably back then you know they could have filled our head up with fluff talking about oh if you have this degree if you have a master's a bachelor's associates then you're guaranteed going to go into this job or you're guaranteed to find a job and that's clearly not the case anymore because we know there are a lot of nepotism going on you have way more benefits to walk into a job right after college compared to somebody else who probably knows a lot more probably did internship and has more experience than that person but yeah because they don't have the connections they just don't get the job or they get undercut with the pay for me i don't have any student loans i did i did go to school for my dental assisting certificate and being that i wasn't home when i did that i had no choice but to go to tallahassee to do it at the community college there because that's the program that accepted me i had to of course take out money in order for me to live over there in order for me to pay my rent for me to pay my car note for me it's utilities you know just food just a day-to-day -day basics so i did leave school with over $12,000 worth of debt. I'm super grateful that I was able to pay off my student loans, I think within two years. Yes, I graduated 2016, and I wanna say at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019 is when I completely paid off my student loans. So I definitely understand the burden that is placed on you in order for you to pay back, but guess what? There are a lot of people who to this day still have their student loans and they've had their student loans for years for like 20 plus years and i don't know i don't think their main obviously their main goal is not to finish paying it off it's like you get what you get you know because they're probably not making that much or they just don't care to pay back all that they took out but i feel as though there should be a cap after a certain amount of years, if you done paid a certain amount, cap it off. Student loan is one of the loans that you can, is it one or the only? I think it's the only loans that you cannot file bankruptcy on. No matter what you do, that loan is always going to be on your profile, on your credit. So if you don't pay it, or if you're delinquent or if you neglect it, it will definitely affect your mortgage. It will definitely affect any cars you're trying to get. It will definitely affect any big financial needs in order for you to either start adulthood or just continue on in life. So I am so grateful I was able to pay off my loan before the pandemic hit because I don't even know how the job market is right now and it just seems very stressful to find a job and not only having to pay for this amount of loan on your back but thinking thinking the loan was going to be 
ceased or it was probably going to be erased and not put anything towards it or like the first lady who spoke she definitely kept on paying but yet at the end of the day it still wasn't enough it still wasn't what she was supposed to do these are the predatory type of actions i'm talking about how are you gonna say okay stop you don't gotta pay but for those who are like all right it's whatever i'm still gonna put something towards it to then find out it doesn't affect anything whether you paid or not so for those who didn't pay all of those interests are going to come at you at once and for those who were paying uh you didn't even put a dent in so what's the real solution here what are we really doing just going to keep people in debt forever The other day, I was talking to my mom on the phone, and she was like, you know, you've been married for two years. Isn't it time to, like, I don't know, get a house, have a baby? And I was like, wow, wow, I've never thought of that. What a great idea. And she's like, okay, don't be a bitch, but, like, wouldn't you rather be putting your rent money, instead of throwing it away, putting it towards something that, you know, you're building equity in? And I was like, do you have an hour right now? Because I will educate you. I will. I would have been like, do you have the entire day? Because a lot of people who are older, a lot of the older generations, they just don't understand. Because a lot of them think millennials are entitled and millennials are lazy. So it's like, well, I did it. Why can't you? When it's a totally different system, the system that they grew up on was to help them. The system that we're growing up on is to keep us down. And I spoke about the housing crisis and just the debt and all of that in a previous video. If you guys want to check that out, I'll leave it down below. But a lot of these things are, once, I, once again, predatory predatory for a reason because they're going to try to snatch suck everything out of you and like the saying that is floating around you will own nothing and be happy they are trying to put us in a place where we own nothing the nobody could basically climb up to the top and if you are climbing it's going to be a hundred times harder for you to get there than the previous generations I will tell you exactly why what you're saying is not making sense. So I did. I told her about the student loan payments that are coming due. And ironically, our combined student loan payments are exactly the same as what she's paying for her current mortgage. So I was like, mom, could you imagine paying an extra mortgage on top of your rent or your existing mortgage payment, whatever? That's crazy. Even in a two-income household, you're thinking, okay, you know, the single ones, we get hit with a single tax because a lot of the time we have to pay for two and it's only one. But even in a two-income household, the debt, it's like the debt multiplies. That's basically what it is. Do you, can you even imagine finding that kind of money every month? That really worked as a wake-up call. Let me stop right there because she's gonna go on and we're just focusing on the student loan part in this video, but she is absolutely right. It just doesn't make any sense financially. It's not as though, oh, we don't wanna work more or we are lazy. It's literally just the rate of inflation outpacing the income, outpacing the wages. That's really what it is. It's not, oh, we don't want to work. There's something called work-life violence that we all deserve as human beings. We do not need to be working 24 hours a day. For those of you guys who have student loan repayments that are going to start back up soon, I honestly, I, I wonder how the consumer index is going to be. I wonder how... The state of the economy is going to be for the U.S. I wonder how people are going to be making ends meet. I wonder how that's going to be. I'm pretty sure everybody, oh my goodness. 
that's going to be the next episode. We're going to talk about the car loans because that right there is ridiculous. But just knowing that a lot of people, um, I know personally, have car loans that is over $700 a month is, is going to be interesting to see how life plays out. I've heard minimum, a lot of people's student loan is going to be about $500 a month. On top of that, you got your $700 car loan. On top of that, you got mortgage or, or your rent. On top of that, you got your utilities. On top of that, you got your credit card. On top of that, if you have kids, you have your kids to fund and finance and take care of. On top of that, you got you yourself. If you are family, you and your husband, or you and your partner, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. So, whew, breathe. <laughs> breathe. That's all I can say. <laughs>